Francisco Cervelli, 13-year veteran who had some really big years with the Yankees and with the Pirates, among other teams, decided to call it a career. And Francisco joins us on the final installment of the show this season. Hey, Francisco, congratulations, man. Uh, it's a wrap. 13 seasons in the big leagues. What are you going to do with all this spare time now? Uh, hello, guys. Um, uh, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm playing tennis. I'm doing uh, little things here and there starting and and but it's been good so it was 18 years career so i cannot complain yeah 13 in the big leagues and 18 year career in pro ball when 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 somebody asks you about the one uniform that you most identify yourself with because you spent seven years with the yankees but five really good years with the bucks do you go back to the yankees the team you broke in with well i i, I consider the yankees uh my school I always say that that was my school. I spent 12 years there uh, between mayors and minors, and but I really identify myself with Pittsburgh. It's it's uh, mm. the city, the the people, the the what happens there in those five years, especially the first year that that was special. You know, Francisco, you said Pittsburgh, and it just made me think of Manny Sanguian. You know, you used to, you popped up, you threw the ball around, you were always smiling, energetic. What what catching style did you pattern yourself after? I don't know. It, it was my style since day one. Um, I have some good coaches. They, they make me realize that I have to play with my style. But um, since the day, uh, the day I met Manny Sanguien, we click in a, an amazing way. Uh, that guy's special. Uh, I love that guy, and he teach me so many things. Especially be be tough behind the play and throw the ball anytime, and and uh, and not worry about anything. Oh, that's pretty cool. Now, was there somebody, a pitcher, that you used to get pretty excited that you threw the ball back a little <laughs> too hard to one time? And they were like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, that was that was Cece. Cece. Um, <laughs> You know, this guy is a huge, is, is calm, and 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 he want to do everything, you know, pitch by pitch. And I was the guy who always, uh, with the energy, <laughs> he he really loved it. But sometimes I throw the balls too hard, and then the, the face, the body language was like, what is this? <laughs> Mike Heath used to do that when he would catch Frank Tanana with the Tigers. Oh, yeah. Right? It would yeah. come in at, like, 79, and it would go back out at, like, 88. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's but that's the way they uh, they teach you. They used to teach you in Venezuela. Like let the pitcher know that the game is on. Especially when they slow it, slow down a little bit, just throw the ball hard and let them know that the, the they got they got to keep pitching. You well, know. Do, I don't know if they had it or not, but did you ever get a radar reading on how hard you threw the ball back? <laughs> what was the hardest one? Well, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Pope. <laughs> It, it was um, – they, they have to do it now because it, it, at this baseball, they just throw the ball back. But, you know, I, I always think the body language is important and yeah. everything you do behind the play is is, is it's going to help your the guys in the infield and your pitcher or it's going to put the team down. So, you know, you, you have to have attitude for three hours. That's it. Hey, in all, all of pro sports, Francisco, there's more awareness on brain trauma in terms of concussion protocols than there ever was previously. And for you, I know that was a part of your career. Um, had it not been for those protocols, th there might be guys that are putting themselves at risk. Speak, if you will, about, in general, the league's attitude and the awareness that they've created for brain trauma and concussion. Well, when I started playing baseball, it was uh, I didn't have concussion protocols. It, the probably the, the the concussion world never exists. And then I had I had a lot of hits in the head, collisions in home play. We didn't have the rule. And um, I think 20 years later, um, the teams are making a big effort of uh, taking care of the players, especially the head, because. Uh, the reality is, if the head is not good, you cannot coordinate any movement. You cannot uh, hit well. You cannot throw well, and it, it's a big problem. Uh, but I think um, every league, every sport, they doing the right thing. Um, but probably we need more. We need more. We need to specify 
uh, probably individual protocols because what affects me is is different than what affects uh, probably Posey or Avila or the other guys. So uh, I think we got to continue to uh, uh, evolve in this uh concussion protocols and because it's real it, it, it affects a lot of things that's really uh, that's good stuff that's real thoughtful stuff and i know that the league takes it very seriously you know hey. I, I, I am going to jump in and ask you yeah. a question it's not about this but it's more about calling the game and you know with all the information catchers get now and i see guys looking you know they build a whole sleeve of things you want to do game planning and i don't see that a lot in latin america you guys are going with feel and you're going with different things so how do you mix both the information and feel for the game to call a game. Well, so sometimes what uh, whoever sends you the piece of paper to put them in your wrist, they don't understand that we study also, that we do our reports. I used to sit down every day to do my reports, study every hitter, my pitcher, everything. So we got our team, but at the same time, the game is going to change. The, the, the scoreboard is going to tell you what to do. So probably the pitcher doesn't have the staff, the, the, or the A game. Yeah. So you have to be creative and you have to have plan B, plan C and plan D. And maybe in the third, the fourth, the fifth inning, you come back to plan A because uh, the game is playing by humans, not robots. So we don't, sometimes we, we have flu or fever or something happened at home and you don't feel well, you play baseball, you know, we don't play a hundred percent every day. So, we got we got to use this and and this, uh, but at the same time, the reports are amazing. The technology now, what they see, uh, they see things that there are um, really uh, helps a lot. But but catchers, they need to use the head. Hey, let's uh, let's let's see how well you remember some of your teammates, Francisco. Because uh, look, you played a long time, and because of your <laughs> unusual, fantastic background, and you have uh, dual sit multi citizenship in different countries. You have uh, Venezuelan lineage. You have Italian lineage. Here's a little game we like to call Paisan or Amigo. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the name of a player. You're going to kill me with this. Okay. Uh, th th it's either an Italian guy or a Venezuelan guy, and you try to guess the player. Here we go. Which Italian-American went from 62nd round draft pick to the 1993 National League Rookie of the Year, and he shared the same position that you played? Oh, that was Mike Piazza. No? Boom, Mike Piazza. That hey. was easy. I got oh. that. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Piazza, uh, Piazza. Which Italian-American was named AL Manager of the Year at 38 years old, the youngest ever in baseball history? Wow. You got me in that one. I don't know. Probably, I don't know if it's Joe Girardi or maybe he played until 45 years old. I don't know. Rocco Baldelli. <laughs> oh. Rocco. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here's You're another one for one. you. Who was your first Venezuelan-born teammate in the major leagues? Probably Bobby Abreu. Bobby Abreu, bang, I nice. What about Bobby Abreu? Last one. Oh, yeah, you played. I got the Bobby Abreu soundbite. Here's wow. the last one. Which Venezuelan-born shortstop has been named both AL Rookie of the Year and AL Manager of the Year? That's uh, Ozzy Guillen. Yes. Ozzy Guillen. I was going to say, if you need a hint, in loco. That would be <laughs> the <loco>. hint. <laughs> hey, man, thank you for the time, Francisco. Congratulations on putting a bow on a really great career in the big leagues. And uh, we hope to see and hear more of you. Oh, thank you, guys. Um, you? I appreciate that. And, and I hope you can do it uh, and, and, and be great at, on TV. You got you to gotta, you gotta get into this media thing, man. You bring too much. Thank Seriously. you, Francisco. Well, let's, let's see. I'm waiting for the call. Let's see what happens. There it is. <laughs> right. It's out there. Good, Francisco man. Cervelli joining us on the Friday program.